welcome back to my channel thank you so much for tuning in today if you are subscribed I thank you if you're not subscribed please make sure you do subscribe and also click the notifications bell so you don't miss out on the videos on this channel so welcome to wisdom Wednesdays we're back again and I'm very honored to come before you and share this word that the Lord has today I pray that this word may put you in the position in your mindset and in your life physically where you need to be spiritually may your physical life your mindset match what God is saying about you today in the spiritual realm so let's go straight into the word of the Lord let's go to the book of John chapter 8 verse 2 to 9 which says now early in the morning he came again into the temple and all the people came to him and he sat down and taught them then the scribes and Pharisees brought to him a woman caught in adultery and when they had set her in the midst they said to him Teacher, this woman was caught in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what do you say? This they said, testing him, that they might have something of which to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and wrote on the ground with his finger as though he did not hear. So when they continued asking him, he raised himself up and said to them, He who is without sin among you, let him throw a stone at her first. And again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. Then those who heard it, being convicted by their conscience, went out one by one, beginning with the oldest, even to the last. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had raised himself up and saw no one but the woman, he said to a woman, Where are those accusers of yours? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, Lord. And Jesus said to her, Neither do I condemn you? Go and sin no more. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So I was given this message yesterday, I believe, yesterday. And, um, you know, the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ was a very peculiar ministry. It's a ministry of ministries. <laughs> it's a ministry that brought out the ugly in people. It brought out the rage, the anger, the jealousy the envy and the competition in the hearts of the Pharisees and the scribes and the Sadducees. It's a ministry that could not be comprehended by human eyes. You needed the Holy Spirit and his understanding to comprehend what the king is doing, to comprehend who this Jesus is. And because they couldn't quite comprehend him, it made them even more angry in life. There may be people who don't really understand you. They don't understand why you do what you do because you're doing what the Father is asking you do, to do. They don't understand your decisions, why you walk the way you walk, why you talk the way you talk, why you go where you go because they don't really quite understand and grasp what God is doing in your life. They were trying to dissect the life of the King of Kings, trying to look with the eyes of the flesh, trying to really discern and understand who is this Jesus? What is he up to now? What is he up to next? Sometimes our lives can bring out the ugly in people. Sometimes our lives can bring out the rage and the anger in the people's hearts. And it's not because of anything or because you're extra special or because you're so unique, but it's because of the anointing. It's because of the grace. It's because of the calling. It's because of the purpose. It's all to do with the Father. Sometimes we have to understand when we go through certain challenges in life, it's not really about you. It's about the Father. It's about the ministry of Jesus Christ in at work in you. So here we see this woman is being brought into this place she wasn't really living a really good Christian life. She uh, was making mistakes. She was living in sin. And the Bible tells us here that she was caught right in the act of adultery. Now, the fascinating thing is that when someone commits adultery, they don't really do it on their own. They are two people involved here, here in the very act. But because of the segregation, the sexism, the undermining of women, the cultural demographics, the cultural limitations, and the way that women are looked at traditionally, they began to bring that person that looks like the weaker vessel according to society and tradition and culture, and they bring the woman 
to the Lord Jesus Christ. But you see, they don't understand that the Lord Jesus Christ is the biggest advocate for women. He empowers women. He doesn't push them down. He doesn't undermine them because of the sins of Eve. You see, this is he who is just and loving and kind. He who is the God of mercy and truth. And the law of love is at work in him. He doesn't operate like those who are under the law of Moses. There's a different law at work. So they bring this woman to this place at this temple where the law of love is at work and he's speaking to the people and they bring this woman to try and test his ministry, to try and test him, to find fault. You see, sometimes you're going through tests because they're trying to find fault in the word of God that was spoken over your life. Sometimes there's things that God spoke in your generation before. There are prayers that your grandmother was making, prayers that your grandparents and your parents were making. So when you go through a test and a trial, the enemy is trying to test the word, the promise that was spoken. Will he really become the prayer that she was praying before. Will you really become the prayer of your grandmother that she believed even to her grave? Are you going to become the promise that the father spoke to your father in your previous generation? Are you going to become the person that they couldn't walk? Are you going to accomplish the things that they couldn't do? Are you the one that is going to be a way maker and set a trend according to the desire according to the promise, according to the word that was spoken prophetically in the secret place, testing the kingdom of God, testing the relationship of the son and the father, testing the miracles and the signs, testing the purpose and the mission of the king of kings, testing Jesus the Christ. So they bring the woman caught in the middle of adultery. The man is nowhere to be seen. He was set free. He, he, he's really uh, not really important because in culture, you know, it's all about the woman and her weaknesses and, and her flaws and what's ugly about her. Because according to this culture, it's the woman's fault. It's, it's the woman's flaws. It's, it's the woman's weaknesses. So let's bring them and lay them down here before he who has the law of love at work in him. Teacher, this woman was caught in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what do you say? What does the law of love say? What does Jesus the Christ say? See, they don't know him. They, they, they think he's like them. They think he's the one that keeps grudges. The one who is so unforgiving and bitter. They think he is like men. Men that don't forget what you did 20 years ago. Men that are so bitter about a decision that you made 20 weeks ago. Men that are so unforgiving, they hold on to your shadow even though you have transformed and you have been transfigured in your mindset. You see, you're not the way that you used to be yesterday. You are a different person, but they hold on to the shadow. Holding on to the things of yesterday, they think Jesus the Christ operates like them. This is why they bring the woman to him. They don't know the kind of person that he is. They don't know the kind of person that you are. They come with you with gossip. What do you say? This person said this and this and that. What do you say about this? They're trying to test how you work. They're trying to test and find fault. How can we pull him down? How can we destroy his influence? How can we destroy the things that are happening in his life? They are not happy with the ministry of Jesus Christ. They are not happy with his popularity. They're not happy with the influence that he has over people, that the whole town is coming to him. In fact, the first verse, it says, now he came early in the morning again to the temple. And the Bible tells us that all, all the people came to him. Do you think they were happy that all the people are going to him? The influence that he has over people. Why are people so drawn to him? What is it about him that we don't have? Why is everybody going to him? He doesn't even own this building. Who does he think he is coming in this temple every day teaching? Who do you think you are getting married? 
Who do you think you are driving a car? Who do you think you are getting an education and a degree? Who does he think he is being the first one in the family to walk this kind of a journey and make it look so easy? Who? Does he think that he is? Isn't this the son of Joseph the carpenter? Who does he think he is starting a ministry? Why does he make things look so easy? Who does he think he is saying that I forgive sins and that I can raise the dead and that the sick are being made well? Who do you think you are? Coming up in here, making noise and making all the people come up here and believe everything that you're saying. And now we are losing our fame and our popularity. We are losing our influence over the people. Who does he think he is? Let us trick him. Let us find a fault. Let us do something. You see, sometimes in life, there are people who are going to ask you questions. Not because they want an answer, but because there's an agenda behind the question. There's an agenda for your downfall. There's an agenda to find fault and to accuse you. You have to be able to discern. Discernment is so important. Everybody that is coming to you and that is your friend calling you and texting you. It's not because they like you. It's because they're not happy about what's happening in your life. They're not happy about the way you're twirling around, walking around and parading yourself in your new blessings. You think everyone is happy? They're not happy about it. They're not happy about the way that you just start new businesses. Who do you think you are? You can just start a new company all of a sudden. They're not happy about the way that you pray, the way you dance before the Lord, the, the way that you are an intercessor, the way that you easily prophesy and you say, hey, I had a dream, I had a dream, God is speaking to me. Some people are not happy about it. Not happy with the gifts that the Father has bestowed inside of your life. Not happy about the way that you love the Lord like Mary. Martha is asking why. Is Mary not helping me here? I'm not happy about the way that Mary just sits at the feet of the King of Kings. They're not happy about the way that you do things for the kingdom of God. Jesus, knowing and discerning and perceiving the kind of hearts, the language of bitterness and envy, understanding and smelling the foul fragrance of jealousy people that are so consumed with the law of Moses that they don't even know the law of love in their hearts anymore so Jesus understanding he doesn't really pay attention to it he stoops down the one who created the heavens and the earth and the ground that they're standing on and these stones that they want to stone this woman in this same creator stoops down stoops down while they are standing. He lowers himself while they stand in their pride and arrogance, while they stand in their anger and envy and jealousy. He stoops down and he lowers himself, not paying attention to the pride, not standing at the same level of pride with them anymore. He lowers himself down. Sometimes we just have to lower ourselves down by making ourselves unavailable. I'm not available to answer your questions about what do you say. I'm not available to stand with you in that kind of pride. I'm not available to answer your questions about the law of Moses. I'm just not available. I have to lower myself from this kind of level. I have to stoop down. He stoops down and he begins to write on the ground that he created. And he wrote with his finger as if he did not hear what they are saying. So they continued asking the same question. They didn't understand that even the king lowers himself. Even the creator lowers himself. In situations that deserve death, he produces mercy. In situations that deserve death, he doesn't condemn. Even though he's physically lowering himself, they cannot discern because they're so blinded by pride blinded by setting order according to the wrong law, blinded by service, blinded by works, blinded by justice that is based on death, blinded. They cannot discern it even though he lowers himself to the ground and he writes with his finger. They continued asking him and then he raised himself up and said to them, he who is without sin among you, let him throw a stone at her first. He who is without sin among you, go ahead, 
since you're so perfect. Go ahead. Go ahead. You be the judge. Seeing as I am God, but you don't trust my decisions. Go ahead. You cast the first stone. Go ahead. Fulfill the law since you're so perfect. As far as I know, nobody has been able to fulfill the whole law. This is why I came. That we can abolish it because no one can live up to the law. Go ahead. Since you are the guys who can live according to the law. Since you are the ones who are so perfect. You do everything in the right way. Go ahead. Since you're without sin. As far as I know, I am the lamb. Without blemish, yet I stoop down, yet I show mercy. Go ahead, go ahead. He who is without sin, cast the first stone. You know, one thing I love about um, the Word of God and the Holy Spirit is that He always gives us the right answer to say, He always gives us the right way to do things. It may not make sense to others, but He always is a step ahead. He raises up a standard against the floods of the enemy, against the shame and the embarrassment that they want. He will give you the words to say. He will tell you what to do. You will escape. You see, they are plotting to bring you down, but just one word, one sentence would change completely, would change and dismantle and disarm their weapons of warfare. You see, there's a way that the Holy Spirit will make you to do things. You must learn to rely on the Holy Spirit. Before you call your friend, before you pick up the phone and text your friend, you see people are waiting for a decision. They're waiting for you to answer them. They're waiting for you to answer them. They're waiting for you to say, yes, we should do according to the law of Moses. They are waiting for a word before you speak a word and you call anybody. Find out from the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. One thing about, I love about the Holy Spirit is that he dwells in us. So he knows exactly what you're thinking. You see, they've created a lie to say, hey, demons know what you're thinking. The devil knows what you're thinking. The devil doesn't have that much power. He can only try to see. He will only try to assume. He's not mindful of the things of God. But you can begin to speak in your heart like Hannah. Praying without words coming out of your mouth. Speaking and meditating on the word of God as he brings to life scriptures that you never knew existed. Scriptures that you had forgotten about. According to the demand that is at hand right now. There's a demand. There's a demand at hand in your life. And the Holy Spirit is going to give you the right Thing to do, the right words to say, the right act to make. He will give you the right thing to say. He is the spirit of wisdom. And so the spirit of wisdom is at work in the Lord. This is why he's able to say he who is without sin cast the first stone. It's wisdom speaking, wisdom that is greater than the law of Moses, than poems, than education and technology and science. Wisdom that is above and higher than the wisdom of the earth and of the air. It's a wisdom that is greater. That's the wisdom that we need in our day-to-day -day life. It's available for us right now. That wisdom is available when you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. You receive the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, who is able to reveal to you the truths concerning that demand. He's able to give you the wisdom that you need right now. The spirit of wisdom is at work and he stoops down again, begins to write on the ground. And you know, when I see this, the Lord writing on the ground, he's finalizing everything. No one has more power than him. When he speaks a word, it is done. When he says he who is without sin, cast the first stone. He's telling them that no one is going to cast a stone here. I own the stones. I own the ground. Whatever I speak, it is done. It is finished. I am the Alpha and the, the Omega. There's no bloodshed coming out. There's no bloodshed today. No one is dying today. Certainly not this woman, even though she's been caught in the very act. We do not operate like that. Today is not the day for anyone to die. Today is not the day for you to die. Today is not the day for anything in your life to die. It doesn't matter what they have said. It doesn't matter if you fell yesterday. No one is dying. You will not die. Your business will not die. Your education and the things that you've been building, they will not die. Do not believe the lies of Satan. They want bloodshed, but the king has spoken. No one is dying today. He who is without sin. 
cast the first stone, please. Come on, go ahead. Then, one by one, convicted because the word has been spoken. I don't know what the word of God that has been spoken in your life. Maybe it was many years ago. You're watching this video and you remember the word like yesterday, but you still cannot see the manifestation of it. You are almost giving up. Try to go a different way because the word that was spoken seems like it's so far away and that it will never happen in your life. You feel you're on your last breath, yet the word still doesn't seem possible in your life. I want you to believe in the word that was spoken. It will come to pass. It doesn't matter if people are holding stones and they're ready to stone you. It doesn't matter if something is a, looks like it's about to go. It doesn't matter how difficult and how bad it looks today. Believe the word that was spoken. The word has been spoken and it will come to pass. No one is dying here. The dream won't die. The promise will not die. The word that was spoken will not die. The vision will not die. The goal will not die. The plans will not die. It is coming to pass. Believe what he has spoken, no matter how impossible it looks. He will carry you through. He who is without sin, cast the first stone one by one. They were convicted. They realized, wait a minute, the way I treated my wife at home, I've been abusing her. How can I cast a stone at this woman? I was lying yesterday. How can I cast a stone at this woman? I stole something from that shop. How can I cast a stone? One by one. I was meditating on the wrong things in my heart. How can I cast a stone? They began to realize one by one that they were not so perfect. They were not without flaw. They were not perfect according to the law. According to the law, they were very imperfect because no one can live up to it. That is why it was put in place so that they can come continually and that sacrifices for their sins can be made until the one who is perfect, the high priest, this same Jesus that they wanted to pull down until he came and until he completed the assignment on the cross and he rose up again. And even on the cross, the temple curtain between the holy place and the holy of holies was torn apart in half by an angel of the Lord to say that it is done. No more need for sacrifices because he who perfects you is here. His name is the King of Kings. His name is the Word of God. His name is the Lord of Lords. Jesus the Christ has perfected us in him. We have been made perfect. We have been made the righteousness of God. Does it mean that we don't make mistakes? No, not necessarily. It means there's a different law at work in us. So it is very astonishing when us Christians, we are fighting. Fighting one another as Christians, pulling one another down as Christians, ministers pulling one another down, competing, jealousy and envy. How is it that we who have a different law at work in us, a law of love, are still trying to operate under the law of Moses? Still bitter, still jealous, still envious, Still hoping for the downfall of somebody who left your church five years ago. Still hoping that they fall because they left your church. Still hoping for the downfall of somebody because they didn't greet you yesterday. Still hoping that somebody will fall because of what they did last week. How is it that there's a different law at work in our hearts? How is it that we're not walking according to the law at work? The law of the spirit. Why is it that believers are pulling themselves down. Why is there a lot of noise? Why is there noise? And it starts with you and I today. It's time to get out of the noise. It's time to go up higher in our mindsets. The way we see the word, it must change. The way we see Jesus and what he has done for us, it must change. The way we view ourselves, our value, our purpose, our missions, it must change. We have to find purpose so that we don't become busy bodies. Purpose. The Lord says, I do not condemn you. You are caught in the very act, but I do not condemn you. However, go and sin no more. Now that we've been made alive in Christ, given power over sin, no longer condemned. The Bible tells us there's no more condemnation for those who are in Christ, who walk according to his spirit. Are we walking according to his spirit? 
Are we walking according to the law of love? Or are we still playing games like little children? Still plotting the downfall of somebody, hoping somebody will fall because you're envious. You see a few pictures on Instagram and all of a sudden you're so angry. What is it that is causing the anger? What is it? We have to check ourselves, people of God. If you want to progress, we have to let go, let go. If you really want to be who we are called to be, we must let go of the games, the childish games. Let go, let go, let go. Yes, maybe it's others that are doing it to you. You still have the law of love. Let go. You don't have to necessarily become best friends with them, but you have to let go. Don't allow it to make you bitter. Don't allow their plotting to pull you down. You have to keep running your race. There's no time to be distracted because so-and-so said that and so-and-so is doing that. There's no time for games. Are you going to focus on purpose today? Focus on doing what is right. Focus on walking according to what God has called you to do. Are you going to focus on destiny, on his kingdom, on the Father? What is he saying? It's time to focus and to run the race. Let's pray. Hallelujah, Father, we bless you. We thank you. Thank you for signs and wonders that are following us, oh God, in this generation for such a time as this. I thank you that despite the plotting, despite, oh God, the evil agendas, despite the lies of Satan, despite the deceptions and the mountains and the giants, the distractions, Father, I thank you that we have our victory. Thank you that you are our victory, that Jesus is our victory and that the power of victory is at work in your people today. Thank you for the power of victory, the manifestation of victory that is taking place in the lives of your people even this week. Father, we bless you. We thank you that this victory will not be taken away. For you will not be taken away. Oh God, I thank you, Father, that these will walk in the victory that you have assigned for their lives for such a time as this, in this age. For the time is short. I thank you for acceleration. I thank you that they are living and we are living in the days of possibilities when things look dark and impossible. Father, I thank you that through the thick clouds, the darkness, the thunders, and the lightnings of society and systems, I thank you that these rise above it because your glory is rising in them. Help them to understand and to see the rising of your glory, that they will not be left behind for your glory rises and they rise with your glory, not by their might, nor by their power, but by your spirit. Father, help these to rely Help your people, your children to rely, to rely on you, rely on your voice, rely on your word, for that is the anchor, that is the anchor of this life, your word and your spirit, that is the anchor, that is the source of victory, the source of their success is your word and your spirit, help them to put all their trust in your spirit and in your word, that they may live the lives that you have called them to live, lives of victory, lives that are shifted day by day because of their mindsets being shifted and renewed from glory to glory, grace to grace. Help them to take hold by your spirit. Take hold of the grace, your unlimited grace that you have given us freely through Jesus Christ. Help us, Father, to take a hold of it in these strange times, to take a hold of the dominion, the power, the grace that is freely available. Oh God, I thank you that these will not play games of jealousy. They will not play games of envy. They will not involve themselves in petty games, for there is no time to play games. I thank you that these have found purpose so they will walk in their purpose. They will walk in their missions, focused and not distracted by questions that have agendas, by small talk and small behaviors. I thank you that these rise above it, like eagles rising above the chickens, the falcons rising, rising into higher clouds, higher glories, higher places of responsibilities and power.
and dominion. I thank you that these will be like eagles in this generation, in this age, in this last hour. Father, help them, help them, help them, oh God, to know that even if they don't have enough friends, even if they don't have enough mentors, you are the friend and the mentor, the greatest friend, the greatest mentor. Help them to understand that with you, they will go far. And with you, they have everything. Oh God, this we pray in the name of Jesus, the name above every other name. We give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you praise. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit of God, we thank you. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your power. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Glory to God. I'm very excited for you. I'm very excited for you. Let the truth of God set your mind free every day. May you go from glory to glory. I see you glow, growing and glowing from glory to glory because of the truth and the spirit of truth. So God bless you and I'll see you very soon. Take care of yourself. Bye.